Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for Search and Excellence Network to begin our pre-conference of the conference Good Governance at Local Self-Government. And today we have a big pleasure to welcome our guest in the room from the United States. Uh, dear professors, it's a huge pleasure for us to have you here. And uh, even the bigger pleasure to have some professors online uh, connecting this discussion pre-conference. First of all, we will hear the presentation of our department professor, Diana Shapirmina. She will discuss the main issue of this pre-conference, research approaches in public administration, this variety matter. And uh, one of the most important things that we have two key speakers online. This is Professor Kenneth Chris uh, from uh, the Hugo Wall School of Public Affairs in the Chita State University, United States. And we have uh, Professor Adam Yarosh from Institute of Political Sciences, University of Zelenogor in Poland. So welcome professors connecting this uh, discussion of our Sages Excellence Network. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And uh, we would like to begin with the presentation from Diana Shapirnina. Diana, the floor is yours. in character, uh, joining knowledge from various disciplines. Uh, as we know, public administration is built on four mainly disciplines as law, economics, political science, and sociology. Uh, sometimes uh, scholars and practitioners are discussing does public administration is an art or a science? Where exactly does public administration fit into this disciplinary framework? Um, as you see in the slide, it is situated somewhere between the natural sciences and the world of the arts. But we all agree that public administration is a branch of social sciences. It's a young, still relatively young science, and as branch of social sciences. Uh, while public administration uh, researchers or scientists usually do not study subject in a laboratory settings, they tend to investigate problems situated in everyday reality, in everyday public administration reality, and tend to give specific recommendations for this reality. So we can state that public administration generally uh, have applied nature. Uh, so it is evident that public administration is more than practical in nature than theory oriented. The applied nature of public administration research um, point uh, that there is a limited body of knowledge. Maybe. What does it could mean? Uh, we know that Etymologically, the word science is derived from the Latin word scientia, uh, which, which means knowledge. So naturally is a rising question, does public administration is a science per se? Because there is limited body of knowledge, as I already men mentioned. Uh, does public administration is a science which create knowledge, which, which develop concepts, theories, about the public administration phenomenon and, of course, relationship between uh, those concepts. And uh, another important question, are these theories such uh, important, how to say? I would like to remi remind you uh, one 
uh, widely known example of uh, um, about sunrise and sunset, uh, which points a collision between practice and theories. Uh, because the sun rises each day and the sun uh, each morning and the sun sets each night, any intelligent researcher might hypothesize that sun revolves around the Earth. Only the theory advanced by Copernicus and Galileo changed the fact that they were self-evident. The facts of sunrise and sunsets became non-facts. So new theory changed even what was evident, what is evident. So, so theory provides us with explanation of phenomenon. Otherwise, public administration already has produced some big theories. Uh, we know theories on new public governance, good governance, uh, network theory, public service motivation theory, and, and etc. And public administration already has an intellectual heritage of research, but still there are permanent debates where there is one best way or the best approach in public administration studies. How we should study or how we should to investigate uh, public administration. Uh, in the sense of philosophy, public administration uh, is examined through ontological, epistemological, and methodological backgrounds. Uh, we know that ontology asks, what is reality and what is existence? Uh, nominalism, uh, we know that declarate that concrete is real. We can observe only concrete reality observe the actual behavior of humans, while uh, realists uh, declare that abstract concepts are real. We can observe only abstract reality. Talking about epistemolo epistemology, uh, we know that epistemology asks what can we know and how do we know what we know? Is knowledge real? Can we reach the truth as postulate positivists? Or is knowledge relative and empirical observation we should combine this logic reasoning as state antipositivists? And methodology asks, how should efforts to know be executed? Should we use ideographic approach, which consents with understanding behavior through studying individual cases? Or normotetic approach, this consent, this understanding behavior through studying all people. Uh, for example, uh, Simon in 1945 states that public administration is not a science per se, but should and could be studied scientifically. Simon was heavily influenced, uh, as we know, uh, by the behavioral movement in social sciences and uh, by positivism. Uh, philosophy, and public administration, according to Simon, should be based only on facts. Empirism, measurement, verification is a background. Uh, is a background. Values, according to Simon, have no place in the realm of public, public administration. Of course, paradigms are changing, and now we can state that public administration is a field which has historically generated a rich body of quantitative as well as, as qualitative research based on positivistic and antipositivistic or postmodernistic approaches. So from an ontolo ontological, uh, epistemological and methodological standpoint, Approaches to research in public administration range, as you see in the slide, from positivism, driven by natural laws, where reality is objective and singular, to antipositivism or postmodernism, where reality is a social construction. Reality is subjective and multiple. In some, the logic of inquiry in the field of public administration is multifaced, 
there are diversity of perspectives, there are variety of approaches to study public administration. Uh, public administration uh, can never be a full science in the sense of physical or natural sciences. It is lending itself to study from any number of ontologies, epistemologies, and methodologies. And each of um, them brings uh, uh, value towards the goal to strengthen in research and public administration. According to Cohen, science progress is evident only through periodic revolutions or shift of paradigms not only for searching uh, true as uh, science progress uh, usually uh, occur. Uh, so if there is still a question, does public administration have a paradigm? Yes, the answer is yes. If we talk of paradigm broader, such a models, worldviews, then public administration absolutely is guided by paradigms. Depending on the definition of uh, paradigm, there are different uh, uh, categorizations. For example, as we see in this slide, uh, they be based on ontological, epistemological concerns, identifies six major perspectives. Early positivism, conflict paradigm, symbolic interactionism, ethnomethodology, structural functionalism, and feminist paradigm. Uh, the Fredrickson, for example, recognizes five, uh, five uh, uh, modes of public administration based on definition of theory as empirical based knowledge. Classic bureaucratic, neo-bureaucratic, institutional, human relations, and public choice. He argues for a sixth one, the new public administration. So there are different paradigms talking about public administration. Discussing about ontological and epistemological issues are not separable from key issues in the qualitative and quantitative debate or choosing of nature of research. Is it research an exploratory, descriptive, or explanatory? As we know, exploratory research involves qualitative studies and reflect anti-positivistic approach, where understanding of human or human group action is possible through the eye of the actor doing this acting. For example, if we are trying to evaluate uh, public policy or evaluate public policy programs of performance of uh, public sector. These researchers has exploratory character in nature. Descriptive studies most often involves quantitative research techniques or a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods and reflect positivistic or anti-positivistic approach. And explanatory research involves quantitative studies and, and hypothesis testing uh, and reflect positivistic approach where public administration reality can be studied only by quantitative information. Uh, in other words, uh, by using some um, uh, numerical data or, or statistical data. So in the philosophy, philosophy of science uh, has been a long discussion about the precedence of theory over data or vice versa. Should knowledge in public administration be generated inductively through experience or deductively through theory? Depending on researchers, Scientific inquiry may take one of or, or mix of forms, as you see in the slide, inductive, deductive, or even abductive approach. In inductive research, you know that the goal of research is to create theoretical concepts from observed data. In deductive research, the goal of research is to test concepts and patterns known from theory using new empirical data. 
Hence, inductive research is also called theory building and deductive research theory testing. Abductive is um, a combination of inductive and deductive approach, which creates space during the research process to generate new, new ideas. The abductive process can be creative, intuitive, and sometimes even uh, revolutionary. Abduction is intent to help social research to be able to make new discoveries in a logically and methodologically ordered way. Uh, we already uh, had discussion about this approach, about um, uh, abduction in the, our RENET network, where our doctoral student, Yurgita Mikolaitita, uh, presented her doctoral thesis methodology with uh, which exactly is based on uh, abduction approach. And questions for our discussion today. How deductive, inductive or abductive approach researcher takes or how they mix these approaches varies considerably across individuals and projects in public administration, but which approach is more than which way dominate in nowadays public administration research field based on induction, deduction, or abduction? It is topic for our discussion today. As well as for discussion about the gap between theory and practice in public administration. Does it exist? It is evident that academicians in the field of public administ administration based on their researchers on their research results are trying to get advice to practitioners. Uh, for this aim, uh, we are organizing conferences as well as this conference on good governance uh, for uh, many years. How practitioners are accepting these new theoretical insights? Uh, does common expression that may work in theory but not in practice have a background? So thanks and uh, have an interesting discussion. I will be back. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Diana, for your scientific theoretical, I would say, uh, insights on possible approaches of research methodology and um, it would be great to um, have the feedback from our key speakers but before that I would like to remind for people who are connected virtually to our discussion that you have the possibility to write some questions and to give the feedback not by word but uh, at the same time in quite convenient way. It is in the chat line please uh, give your feedback and some uh, questions we will read it loud. Thank you in advance. And uh, now, um, before uh, giving the possibility to give some questions for our guests uh, being here in the room or connected, we would like to ask Professor Adam Yarosh uh, from Zelenogola University, Poland, to give some insights or feedback to Professor Diana's presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, do you hear me anywhere? I think we can hear you. Good, can you hear me? Uh, so, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. And I apologize for my voice because while I got ill and uh, my voice is terrible. Uh, what, um, <clears throat> so, thank you for this interesting uh, presentation and uh, theory to theor theoretical development of philosophical as well approaches. But uh, <clears throat> what I could add uh, to your presentation is, uh, well, in Polish, in, in Poland, for example, recently, there are a lot of discussions if public policy is a separate science. Yes, so if we think on, of public administration, we can differentiate between these structures, so kind of in political scientific terms, polity, uh, its actors, well, in, in, in this area of politics where the public administration executes what 
politicians have decided, and the first killed the policy area. And now this public policy is being, is being so much well developed that some say that this is a, a separate science. Well, I don't agree with it personally. Um, referring to your question, uh, I think that uh, public, well, there is, in my opinion, there is rather, there is no gap between theory and practice in public administration. Because if we ob when when we observe different cases, uh, we can see how how many of, for example, if we think of governance concept, yes, good governance concept, which uh, presumes uh, well cooperation of many partners in public management, yes, so involving business partners, involving uh, inhabitants of, at the local level, uh, so the society. And a lot of different, well, different uh, tools, let's call it this way, that theory brings, are introduced into our lives. Yes, the, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, for example, in Polish case, uh, we can we can really observe it. As it's kind of laboratory how it is introduced. Yes, and what are the effects? Uh, what uh, advantages it gives, but also what problems it brings. Yes, so how it, it's used. So I would say that, uh, well, <clears throat> I, would, I would evaluate it positively because I say that, well, science is giving really a lot into practice and a lot of different scientific concepts, uh, maybe not in pure form yes, as they were developed at the very beginning, but indeed they are introduced and they bring different tools to make the administration much more efficient better working and serving the the society which well it, it's the main aim of the administration okay. so maybe for, for this moment uh, i will pass uh, the voice uh, to, to the next speaker thank you Adam, for your insights it's a quite interesting uh, attitude that there are some ideas, but some researchers do not accept those ideas and they create the new um, understanding and new view to uh, research issues. And we would like to ask Professor Kenneth Chris to give some insights, even we do not see him, but we know he's online and we would like Professor to hear your Begin about those approaches. Okay, thank you very much. Just to make sure um, that you can hear me there still. Yes, Professor, we can hear you perfectly. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Professor, perfectly. Thank you. You can continue. Okay, great. Uh, my perspective might be a little bit different given that my background is in economics and finance, but I, I do not think that there's a gap between theory and practice in public administration. I think that view has been pushed out by people who would rather change the direction of research in public administration. Um, I think that most people who do research in public administration are tied at least somewhat to the practice of public administration. Just to give one example, I serve on uh, a board that manages investments for our local government. And I use the theory that I develop in my research to inform our practice in managing the investments. But I also use the practical knowledge that I generate from, from helping to manage the investments for helping to develop the research knowledge in the field. And so I, I think that there is a way for these 
uh, to to work together in a sense. Uh, in terms of the the, the question about uh, knowledge generation inductively uh, versus deductively, that's an interesting question, and and I would say that in, in the fields in which I study, there tends to be a lot more deductive uh, deductive types of uh, approaches. Um, although, if I could, I'd like to question the link, if I could. Oftentimes, people uh, misperceive methodology and epistemology. So, uh, I don't see as much of a link between positivism and quantitative methods. Uh, to me, it's possible for there to be qualitative methods which are equally positive in the sense that they are trying to observe uh, facts, processes, etc. cetera. Uh, just as there are ways for quantitative types of of methodologies to be used in an exploratory sense to generate new knowledge. So if we didn't have measurement, for example, in, in my field about uh, how, uh, how investments are made uh, in local governments, there wouldn't be a foundation for any type of hypothesis development in terms of and theory development in terms of of how local governments are doing their investing you need that initial exploratory research uh, which in a lot of cases is mixed methods it involves interviewing and uh, the, the collection of data to, to start to build the theory which then once we have the theory can be tested deductively so I, I guess from my perspective, I see less of a, a, a link between concepts like positivism, positivism and, and quantitative uh, types of methodologies. I think that's been enforced by some in the field. One last comment, if I could, is that, uh, and this picks up, I guess, a little bit on what I think Adam was trying to say, is that one of the, one of the things that's undergone revolution within social sciences over the past several years has been a search for new types of methods. Uh, so on the qualitative side, we have things like synth synthetic control method, which allows us to compare cases better uh, on something like comparative case study. Uh, and in other fields, we have the rise of truly experimental methodologies. I've been doing some uh, studies using behavioral economics and behavioral finance type of uh, methodologies. So uh, experiments, presenting people with different sets of information and seeing how they react to it. That's very much a theory building type of an exercise, but it is done. I guess you'd say within a quantitative uh, background because I'm collecting quantitative data, but it's but it's not about the new type of regression analysis. It's about how do you uh, control things directly through an experimental approach, and that would conclude my my initial comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor, for your comments. Um, I think that Diana would like to give the feedback for both commenters. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, about discussion uh, regarding the um, um, uh, no, uh, gap, uh, existing gap between theory and practice. Um, uh, uh, as Adam mentioned and, and cannot uh, uh, mentioned that there is no gap between theory and practice in public administration, um, but maybe it can be a question about um, does theory uh, reach the practice or uh, how uh, practitioners or practical auditory 
uh, of accepting theoretical insights, uh, how theory comes to the practitioners, I think it is this maybe main direction of, of this question. Uh, do the theory uh, reach the practice? Uh, how the theory reach the practice? But situation is changing, and um, in the conferences, the seminars, uh, the uh, different uh, activities in, in public sector shows that practice is open to uh, get more and more theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, new theoretical knowledge, uh, and uh, uh, this gap uh, exactly in this period is. Um, uh, not not so big and, and becoming more and more uh, close the theory and practice in in my in my opinion in my point. Uh, another one another one to, um, about um, uh, the uh, about the uh, co uh, correlation between positivism, anti-positivism, quantitative or qualitative uh, research, uh, of course. Thank very, first of all, thank you very much for Kenneth Chris about examples. And uh, I would like to say that I already also am a, a representative of quantitative research, and uh, many of my uh, scientific uh, uh, investigations are uh, based on quantitative research. But anyway, uh, these examples also show that it is. Uh, 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 more closer and closer um, uh, conceptions, methods uh, are mixing. And now, now we are go uh, talking not only about the separate methods, but usually we are uh, talking about mixed methods, uh, about possibility to apply different, from different perspectives, different methods, as well as approach of abduction shows that it is uh, more possibilities for researchers to uh, to, to uh, find uh, different ways in um, uh, using uh, different investigations. So uh, I think that uh, there is more and more uh, there are changes in in, in the uh, relationship between uh, science and practice, but still we have. Uh, uh, still, we have uh, uh, what to do in this kind. So, thank you. Thank you, Professor Diana. Um, I see that maybe Adam has some insights on this um, comments from Professor Diana. Professor Adam, are you ready to comment? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, well, I would say that uh, what we have to remember is that uh, the practitioners, yes, so uh, clerks or even lo local or other politicians who are at the top uh, uh, of on the at the top of the administrative structure, what they try to do is find the most well the most efficient ways of fulfilling their tasks of serving the society, yes. and sometimes well we have to remember what. Uh, Professor Kenneth uh, has mentioned that, well, sometimes the, the research is kind of, well, experiment, something new, yes, which brings also a risk for practitioners. A risk, if something goes wrong, then a scientist will say, well, sorry, my theory was wrong. But a mayor of a city, for example, is responsible for his or her decision. Yes. So that's why I can sometimes understand why they are maybe not to say close to the new ideas or theories or, or well, um, tools of doing things or ways of doing things based on the scientific knowledge or, or new theories. Uh, but uh, they are very often quite reluctant. On this. Yes. But I can understand it because, as I say, something that also we have, we also what I would like to mention is that uh, nowadays, because of uh, means of communication, internet, and so on, we have really a lot of data and great uh, opportunities for uh, comparative research. 
for comparative methods. Yes, both qualitative and quantitative. quantitative which brings some, also it, it makes the well, proving, proving of the theories easier, yes, if a concept is applicable, is right or wrong, yes, we can compare, we can quite easily find information from different countries um, and also, well, avoid the, 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 the mistakes, the, the errors that, that, that were made, yes. Um, and well, that's why I would I would uh, I would uh, well understand the practitioners that they are sometimes reluctant in, in introducing different concepts. Yes, but on the other hand, parts of them are indeed introduced because well, that data-based analysis, data-based uh, or proven theory theory with case studies, with data, with even experiments are, um, well, showing that something can be done better, something can work more efficient, and can bring more profit, yes. And, and this is really great role of science. Uh, and uh, as we are also, this is a great role of science in the practice. That's why this communication is, is important, yes. That's why, for example, uh, what you do is, is, I think, very good thing, really good thing, because you, invite also practitioners to your conferences and sessions, yes. But uh, <clears throat> to conclude, uh, also the, what is new in the methodological, well, in the methods or in the, in the investigating public administration is the interdisciplinary approach, yes, that we can join methods of different sciences, we can build up the scientific teams which consists of, let's say, sociologists, political scientists, economists, and others, who can really make much more complex analysis of different issues, and this way bring a lot of new and very valuable, valuable knowledge to the practices. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Adam, and uh, we would like to ask Professor Kenneth Chris to give his feedback or to give another questions for following discussion. Thank you. Um, I'd like to build for a second on what Adam uh, just said. I think there was a very important part of what he said, and that is the role of communications uh, that one of the things that I've noticed, uh, having been in this field now for over 20 years, is that we don't tend to communicate well within different methodological and epistemological silos. So we have uh, we have conferences where you find mostly people are trained in economics or political science or law, um, and you tend to have conferences where you have people with much more of a background in the humanities or sociology or, or, or something like that. And so I think it's the openness of the communication that, that exists between different theoretical and epistemological bases, which will provide for the, the moving forward of, of theory. Now, I, I, I was thinking of a quote, and I, th I think it's from C. Wright Mills, the famous sociologist, but I, but I, but I might be getting it wrong, uh, the, the attribution. But, but he said something like, uh, theory is all around us. It's in the air. It's just for us to, as, as academics, to kind of distill it, to kind of capture it, uh, and formalize it into a method which can be tested. That's really the role of, of an academic is to you know, take the discussions. If, if you go to the grocery store, you can hear 100 different theories about what's going on in the world. But it's up to the academic to be able to catch, capture those, distill those, and then present them in a way that we can have some type of uh, scientific approach to test it or formalize it. So, so further studies, as Diana said, to 
to to kind of put to put uh, structure around the theory. And so I think that's that's that speaks to the need for academics to be very open to uh, new ways of doing things. So therefore, uh, kind of going back to my original thing, I think if you're studying, for example, uh, transportation, I think you should go to meetings of your local transportation authority, uh, not as part of any formal uh, investigative approach but just to see what they're talking about uh, or 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 visit uh, government organizations and just talk to them about what they're doing my, my guess is you'll find 10 or 20 theories within a, a very short period of time that you can just write down and then come back to as a way to generate more formal theories later which can be tested. And so that, I think, would help close any gap that exists between theory and practice uh, to become engaged academics and, and, and be involved in a lot of the discussions that are going on uh, right now in, in, in the world. And that's the, the end of my comments. Thank you, Professor. Um, I would like to ask audience, maybe they would like to share some insights, what kind of research methodology or approaches they are using in their own researches made in uh, public administration. Professor uh, Carol Abdon, would you like to add some comments to our discussion, please? Thanks, Vida. Can you hear me? <clears throat> well, first of all, hello to Dina and Adam and Ken. It's nice to see all of you. Uh, I guess I'll disagree with Ken a little bit about the gap. I'm sorry, I'm going to go on the first question and not the second, so I'm not doing what you asked me to do, Vita. I apologize. <laughs> uh, I do think there's a big gap between theory and practitioners in the U.S. All of our incentives as academics is to talk to each other and not to talk to practitioners. We're encouraged to publish in academic peer-reviewed journals that in ways that only academics have the time and the ability to really read, especially if we do quantitative research, because it's very hard for practitioners to understand all those regression models that we use, et cetera. So I think it's very hard for practitioners to truly understand what we're doing unless we go out of our way and make efforts to do that. And if you look at, in the US again, if you look at how practitioners get their information, they often go to national conferences uh, I do finance research like Ken, and uh, the Government Finance Officers Association is a big organization in the U.S., and you see very few academics giving presentations there. It's mostly either finance officers talking to each other, or it is consulting companies, so people that work in businesses that want to sell different cities ways to do things so it's not there's not very much talking between academics and practitioners i think that there are in certain places ken for instance runs a conference for people in his state finance officers in his state and he does a very good job at bringing together the practitioners and the academics so i think there are ways to do that and again it goes back to what adam says i think a lot of it is about communicating um, and bringing people together, and there are ways to do that, but I don't think that we do a very good job of that overall in the U.S. That's my comment. Thank you. And uh, if you will let, I will ask Professor Kenner to give the feedback for Professor Carroll. Well, uh, I would I would greet uh, Carol and uh, and just note that we are the farthest apart we 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 ever can be I think because we we usually live about five hours from each other here um, and I also note that uh, it was it was uh, actually Dr Ebden who got me involved in my first uh, my first pension uh, applied pension. Uh, uh, position. So uh, she's she's inflicted this upon everybody. Um, I, I do agree that that in some areas there is a gap. Um, I, I think that that although there is that kind of 
you know, lack of uh, discussion that goes on. There's a definite need to, to bridge this, but but again, what I what I would say is the the way that we should do that is through uh, convening these type of uh, of events where we bring together uh, explicitly practitioners and and academics to talk about uh, to talk about issues. Um, my 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 recent experience has told me that this tends to happen most unfortunately when there's some kind of a crisis uh when when there's some kind of a need to 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 bring people in then finally they're they're brought in and so i think the way that we break this down is through uh is through convening events but but also doing things like in in our peer review uh, most of us who are senior in the field ser serve as peer reviewers uh, for for academic journals. If we start holding people to a standard or or holding people to a uh, at least drawing together the links between what they're doing uh, in their research and and how it might inform practice there could be more of a uh, more of an impact that's made and so if we if we care less about the regressions as as dr ebden said uh, uh or not less but equally if we put the impact on an equal footing i think we'd be much better served as as a field uh in terms of of what we're really doing Thank you, Professor. And uh, I see that uh, one of our very welcome uh, participants of the conference, Scott is ready uh, to give some feedback as well. Please. Sure. Uh, Dr. Chris, hello. It's Scott Bovic from Lithuania. I haven't seen you in a while, but good, good to hear your voice. Um, wish we could see on the, the screen. Um, so I have a unique experience because I've been a practitioner for about 20 years, <clears throat> um, actually working in local government and then going back to school to, to work on my PhD. And so I tend to agree with Carol um, and her perspective on the gap. And I think um, in my mind, the, the question is, are practitioners seeking out theory? And the great thing to hear from what Dr. Chris said was academics need to seek out practice, um, which I think is great. And having my perspective of being both on the, the practitioner and the academic side, I, I do think there's a gap. And I was actually surprised to hear um, Dr. Jaros and Dr. Chris both say, yeah, it's, it's pretty much resolved. There's, there's no gap. Um, as I've gone through the PhD program, I think what I've come to realize as a student is that um, theory does matter, and if and I do believe the 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 best, the highest performing practitioners out there are engaged into theory, um, but it takes a special effort and a special commitment for them to do that. So I think. Um, I think the gap still exists, but I think the communication or the engagement is an important piece like Dr. Cruz mentioned. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your insights. Um, I'm quite sure that United States has the experience when you feel some kind of gap between practitioners and academics, but uh, uh, let me ask uh, Professor Adam. Adam, uh, do you feel any kind of gap between uh, your um, people who are working in the university and those who are working in the institutions of public administration? Do you feel uh, that it's becoming more and more connected between each other, those two groups? Please, uh, we are welcome, welcoming your comment. Yeah, so first of all, what I would like to say is, well, I don't agree a little bit what, what you said right before, uh, because we shouldn't forget one, one quite important thing, that 
the, the same as in the technical sciences or I don't know biological sciences. What is uh, applicable in the practice is well a few years, maybe ten years behind of what is what has been invented. Yes, probably I don't know if we think of electric cars, yes, which is very very becomes very much much uh, more and more fashionable thing. Uh, probably, we, I could think that probably there are already technologies which could, well, give you a car which is uh, as the same dynamic as the, as the uh, petrol car, or it can ride on one charging the same amount of kilometers, yes? But probably those, those technologies are still not that well tested and so on, yes? So, what we develop here is sometimes kind of again experiments, uh, still not well tested, and only well to be applicable. It needs a little bit of time. Yes, it needs some further studies, some empirical studies, some data, maybe comparative studies, and so on. And only then we can think of imp uh, well uh, introducing something. Yes, let's say participation. Now it's very very fashionable thing in in uh, local government in the cities and so on but we are still testing yes, there are a lot of well, there are some traditional tools like let's say neighborhood councils or but even participatory budgeting in Poland is becoming more and more and more popular and year or within only five years uh, like around 80 cities in Poland introduced it yes um, why? Because in some places, few cities at the very beginning, five years ago, made it in a kind of experimental way, uh, also basing on the experiences which were introduced few years earlier in Brazil and other places in Western Europe, maybe also United States. And only step by step, the next ones are, are also trying to, to, to introduce it. Yes, there are more and more new methods of of introduce of of engaging people into into the political decisions at the local level and they are gradually introduced yes. so i would say that well we should understand it this way that first we discuss among our we write well papers for a scientific journal and only if something is really accepted by scientists itself agreed that this is a good thing, then it can go into practice, and it does. For example, in Poland, we have such a, uh, such a journal, the title of Spulnota, you can translate it as Community, which is a local government journal. It is, um, it is not scientific, there are, there is like, there are short, short papers, like two, two to four pages. And a lot of academics write their articles on different things, on different issues, yes. Or, or, for example, smart city, another topic, which is a very new one, but also gradually different issues are are introduced, uh, are being introduced related to this concept of smart city. I saw in this journal a lot of different articles written by academics. How can we introduce? What does it mean, smart city, and so on? Yes. Also, for example, in last years we had a lot of cases in Poland where uh, strategic documents were created by local governments. And usually there are really a lot of, a lot of academics engaged in that process, yes, from different fields, um, including economists, sociologists, and, and so on, who present firstly the, the problems that, uh, or, or the, 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 the SWOT analysis, yes? What are our strong things? What are, uh, what are our uh, weak points? And what are the, the chances and challenges and this is usually done by, by or very, or maybe not always, but very often by academics. And relating to Vita question, you see, I work at the University of Zielona Góra, which is a small, relatively small, very regional university. Yes, our students are only people from the area from Zielona Góra, and we have very good cooperation with with uh, local authorities, both with city authorities, regional authorities. Even with government administration, which is also present at the regional level in Poland. Yes, for example, to give you an example, um, 
there was a problem with healthcare in, in the region. Yes, and now university opened first of all medical studies, and second they also uh, changed the regional hospital into the well uh, academic hospital. Yes, which is related to the university, and it, it has been also supported with a lot of money by the regional government. Yes, in order well regional government is responsible for for hospitals. So most those biggest ones, yes, the regional one. And this way, cooperating with academics, they are well, supporting it, and university is helping them to fulfill their task. Yes. Uh, so, uh, well, of course, it depends, just to sum up what I want to say, it depends with the communication, but I wouldn't agree that the academics are not present in the practice. Yes. Of course, it's different form. Of course, we as academics have to bring it to the practitioner in a little bit different form, more simplified, because if we start to speak in theoretical terms, that we are, this, we between us discuss it, probably even a well educated mayor will sit, sit and look at us a little bit weird. Yes? But if we bring it, transform it into a little bit uh, more simple way, then we, we are able to, well, contribute to implementing some, some new things which will make administration, public administration, much more efficient and better working. That's my point. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Adam. And uh, I would like to ask if our guests have the feedback for Professor Adam. No? They agree with, they are smart and can agree with your opinion. And, um, uh, Adam shared some insights about Poland, and uh, our department got some guests from the Ministry of Internal Affairs a few months ago. What surprised me is a uh, researcher, a scientist, uh, the head of all the department, was so good on terminology of good governance and new approaches that is happening. And, and uh, when you talk with such a person, such a practitioner, knowing what is going on in the scientific world, it's so good that it seems we are speaking one language. We understand each other. And even our researchers become uh, more and more significant for practitioners to look at what is happening in regions, especially in the when we're talking about the lack of regional policy, the lack of regional support. So in this case, if practitioners participate in all those uh, social partners councils, if they support our conferences, if they take part of our dis in our discussions, it seems that we can find some common issues and understanding of, of each other. So I would like to ask Professor Diana Chapelin, Diana, could you tell us more what you see from your own experience being in Shulun University as well in Kleipeda? What is happening between uh, practitioners of municipalities and academic staff of departments working in public administration? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vitan. Um, um, first of all, I would like to start from um, some generalization of our discussion and later some examples from my own experience. But uh, first of all, main thesis of our discussion now it is that it's necessary to create world, world of communication or to develop two-way street between theory and practice, between the, uh, theoretical insights and, and practice. And um, theory may be applied to practice, but practice informs theory as well, is the main, uh, the main uh, thesis. Of course, complexity of problems in public administration is growing, and that is evident that uh, need for more uh, rigorous and systematic researches in public administration uh, are growing as well. And uh, Talking about this example, uh, uh, about situation, uh, how situation is rapidly changing in different countries, as well as the case of Lithuania shows that situation, uh, talking about the two-way street between theory and practice, is very rapidly changing. 
And uh, the same examples as participatory budgeting or from my own research field, electronic participation in decision making, making is this or, or smart, uh, smart um, uh, cities development or, or, or another concept in the past two years, very rapidly situation changing in all these new concepts uh, in implementing or, or implementation of all these new uh, concepts. Uh, so um, I think that uh, creation of two-way street is general aim in seeking for the uh, results as in public administration, as uh, in general uh, welfare of our societies. Uh, I'm glad that today we have, have discussion about uh, this issue because uh, communication is a theoretical concept in all new tiers of public administration. So thanks. We have one more guest in this room. I do uh, understand that some of you would uh, like more to listen than to speak. But Professor Yu Chen Li from South Korea, China National University. Um, I do understand that we live in quite different regions United States, Lithuania, Europe, Poland, in Europe, and now we have South Korea and Asia. What is happening there? Do you have good communication? between practitioners and uh, scientists in public administration field. Please share your experience, Professor. Thank you. Um, to answer the questions, I think um, we have to distinguish two different conceptions of theory. Um, I don't know her name, but she said that in America, there is a big gap between theory and practitioners. When she said that, and then to my understanding, when she said that the theory is like a, you know, very abstract theory that can be accepted by the by the journalists, reviewed by the peers. So that theory is kind of away from the reality. When Adam said that, that there is a communication issue, so there so sometimes there's no communication. When he said that there is a, a more close relationship with theory and practice, what he meant by theory is not that pure theory. It is more applicable, more, more like a you know, hypothetical proposition relevant to the situation. In Korea, we have a very similar uh, discussion. We, in the past one decade, actually, there is always a um, talk of crisis of public administration in Korea. One of the reasons is that the uh, papers accepted by the journal does not touch on the reality of the public administration, government activities. But on the other hand, when public administration scholars involved in the process of decision making, or as um, they are proposing some propose, uh, proposing some recommendations to some key issues, relevant issues, practical issues, they are making contribution. So there are two different kind of theory in this sense. So um, that that is the situation. And then if I can, um, I like to make one more. Uh, comment on uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, this is very interesting in-depth um, discussion, so I love it. Uh, so if I like to make some comment on the presentation, she divided the theory into positivism and post-positivism or anti-positivism, but um, I am a theorist of critical realism. I think um, she may introduce the concept between these two and then think about ontology, epistemology, and methodology. I think that uh, discussion will be more fruitful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, I'm not sure, but maybe Professor Carroll would like to give the feedback for Professor Chile. No, I don't think this is okay. Uh, I can see that we have a PhD student, Christina Kuprita. She wants to give uh, some feedback as well, please. 
Hello, everyone. I am Kristina Kuprit, a PhD student of Shule University, and I think I am the best example of um, that integration, practitioners and, and, uh, and uh, scientific world, because um, I can I have my own uh, personal experience. Then I, uh, as professional musician, started to uh, studies in a PhD in the research in arts management and the reactions of uh, uh, scientists and the reactions of a uh, uh, practitioner world. I was never good anymore in no one field because um, uh, scientists said that what she's doing now, she should go on with her professional music life and she never can reach a scientific level to talk about because uh, science is not for practice. Science is something for future and so you cannot adapt now in uh, now what you can research uh, and uh, she never can be good enough and the practitioners said in opposite way what she cannot perform anymore what she is go going to do in science uh, we cannot talk uh, anymore with her in the future because she gonna talk about some philosophies and so and so it's some kind of images in, in, in the United States it's less, but in Lithuania there are some images uh, that we are different. Uh, scientists are higher, I don't know if we are different, and practitioners also in different boxes. We are different boxes and indeed it's need more um, communication and more some connected fields uh, to, for integration. So thank you. Um, thank you, Christine. Um, you remind me the main issue for our innovation management, think out of the box. So even uh, community practitioners as well as uh, scientists must become innovative to think out of the box. And so uh, thank you very much for your comment. I would like to ask Professor Kenneth Cruz if you could, Professor, could you give a final insights or generalization of your uh, uh, speech today? And maybe to give uh, some questions for our future discussions that we could um, discuss maybe next year in a good governance conference. So, Professor, a little bit missing at this very moment, maybe because of the connection. Um, okay, uh, Professor Adam, would you like to give some final generalization of our discussion? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, well, actually, uh, my conclusion will be quite short. Yeah? So, I think that uh what we do now is uh, uh, or, or the public administration definitely needs the knowledge that scientists develop uh, and this way it needs uh, also scientific theories but our most important challenge is to develop communication what was said good communication challenge ch uh, channels sorry and well so to call it translate the science theory, scientific theories into practical into practical into into the language of practice maybe this was, yes so that they are properly understandable and um, and uh, this way applicable yes yeah? uh, because uh, well to in, in, in our times to deal with many issues which are sometimes get very dynamic and and uh, sometimes complicated we need the, the the knowledge yes and this knowledge is most, mostly produced by by scientists of different disciplines yes and that's why and that's why uh, well public administration needs science yes so but as i say the main challenge is to translate science into the language of practice and then well this this cooperation uh, can be even more successful than, than it already has become yes and still becomes because of this, i think kind of a process 
thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Adam. Uh, I would like to ask if Professor Kenneth Chris is still online and would like to give the generalization, main conclusions. So, Professor, maybe lost connection, but we hope that his participation was meaningful and significant to this discussion. Uh, are there any other participants in this room who would like to add some final conclusions? Maybe Professor Carroll would like to do this. Some finalization of your insights, please. I don't really have anything to add. I think this has been a great discussion and very thought provoking. Uh, and I will be thinking tomorrow, I think, about, about ways that we could take this further to the Good Governance Conference for next year and topics that you might think about for next year. So I think that was a great question, Vita. Thank you. Well, thank you, Professor. And um, of course, we would like to ask Professor Diana to give finalization of this discussion. And uh, if somebody online still has some questions, I saw some colleagues from Slovenia connected. So please, uh, you still have the chance to give the final questions. If there will be no questions, we will finish very soon with the main issues uh, uh, given by Professor Diana. So Diana, please. Give me a summarizing. Uh, uh, my summarizing will be short. Um, I would like to say that it was very nice uh, to meet you. It was an interesting discussion today. Uh, thank you for all of you for this discussion. Um, we could to prolong tomorrow uh, or maybe in our next RENET meeting uh, this discussion. Uh, and of course, tomorrow I hope uh, uh, we'll participate more practitioners in the conference, and uh, um, we can to prolong the discussion. So thanks very much for your comments, for your insights, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, we can and should prolong this discussion in future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Diana. We can't see any questions now, so let me um, thank, first of all, for our key speaker and presenter, Professor Diana Shapovina, for raising a little bit hot issue in academic society, how not to be too far from practice. So thank you, Diana, for your presentation today. And I'm very thankful for both key speakers, Professor Ken Chris, States and Professor Evan English from Poland for taking part to the distance in this discussion and giving so significant insights on our discussion. Thank you both of uh, key speakers for, um, I would say, criticism and different attitudes to the same issue. Uh, at the same time, I'm very thankful for all uh, participants online who joined our discussion, and all participants in the room, especially guests from the United States and South Korea, for taking part in this discussion in this pre-conference. I would like to remind everybody that tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will start the plenary session of our conference with governments at local cell government, and we will have a, a new uh, speakers, presenters giving us, I would say, very significant presentations with uh, good insights in the research field, at the same time giving us ideas how to develop public administration and public sector modernization. Professor Carroll, Professor Chili, Professor Diana Chaparin, and of course, the Associated Professor Everything holding from Latvia University will take a part in it. So everybody are invited to take a part in this plenary session. And if you do not mind, the last um, most important thing, 
let's take a common photo with presenters being online. So I will comment to the microphone and uh, our colleagues will stand here, but we would like to take a common picture of all participants in this discussion. So thank you very much for your participation.